Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. We are studying an introduction to statistical quality control. Quality improvement in the modern business environment. In this video we will discuss in details about Deming's 14 points for management. Before starting, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, just click on subscribe, and press the bell icon. Here, we come up with new videos on different subjects, to make the academic studies easier for you. So, into the topic. W. Edwards Deeming was educated in engineering and physics at the University of Wyoming and Yale University. He worked for Western Electric and was influenced greatly by Walter A. Schuart, the developer of the control chart. After leaving Western Electric, Deeming held government jobs with the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Bureau of the Census. During World War II, Deeming worked for the War Department and the Census Bureau. Following the war, he became a consultant to Japanese industries and convinced their top management of the power of statistical methods and the importance of quality as a competitive weapon. This commitment to and use of statistical methods has been a key element in the expansion of Japan's industry and economy. The Japanese Union of Scientists and Engineers created the Deeming Prize for Quality Improvement in his honor. Until his death in 1993, Deeming was an active consultant and speaker. He was an inspirational force for quality improvement in the United States and around the world. He firmly believed that the responsibility for quality rests with management, that is, most of the opportunities for quality improvement require management action, and very few opportunities lie at the workforce or operator level. Deeming was a harsh critic of many American management practices. The Deeming philosophy is an important framework for implementing quality and productivity improvement. This philosophy is summarized in his 14 points for management. We now give a brief statement and discussion of Deeming's 14 points. Number 1. Create a constancy of purpose focused on the improvement of products and services. Deeming was very critical of the short-term thinking of American management, which tends to be driven by quarterly business results and doesn't always focus on strategies that benefit the organization in the long run. Management should constantly try to improve product design and performance. This must include investment in research, development, and innovation, which will have long-term payback to the organization. Number 2. Adopt a new philosophy that recognizes we are in a different economic era. Reject poor workmanship, defective products, or bad service. It costs as much to produce a defective unit as it does to produce a good one, and sometimes more. The cost of dealing with scrap, rework, and other losses created by defectives is an enormous drain on company resources. Number 3. Do not rely on mass inspection to control quality. All inspection can do is sort out defectives, and at that point it is too late, the organization already has paid to produce those defectives. Inspection typically occurs too late in the process, it is expensive, and it is often ineffective. Quality results from prevention of defectives through process improvement, not inspection. Number 4. Do not word business to suppliers on the basis of price alone, but also consider quality. Price is a meaningful measure of a supplier's product only if it is considered in relation to a measure of quality. In other words, the total cost of the item must be considered, not just the purchase price. When quality is considered, the lowest bidder frequently is not the low-cost supplier. Preference should be given to suppliers who use modern methods of quality improvement in their business and who can demonstrate process control and capability. An adversarial relationship with suppliers is harmful. It is important to build effective, long-term relationships. Number 5. Focus on continuous improvement. Constantly try to improve the production and service system. Involve the workforce in these activities and make use of statistical methods, particularly the statistically based problem solving tools discussed in this course. Number 6. Practice modern training methods and invest in on the job training for all employees. Everyone should be trained in the technical aspects of their job, and in modern quality and productivity improvement methods as well. The training should encourage all employees to practice these methods every day. Too often, 
employees are not encouraged to use the results of training, and management often believes employees do not need training or already should be able to practice the methods. Many organizations devote little or no effort to training. Number 7. Improve leadership and practice modern supervision methods. Supervision should not consist merely of passive surveillance of workers but should be focused on helping the employees improve the system in which they work. The number one goal of supervision should be to improve the work system and the product. Number 8. Drive out fear. Many workers are afraid to ask questions, report problems, or point out conditions that are barriers to quality and effective production. In many organizations the economic loss associated with fear is large, only management can eliminate fear. Number 9. Break down the barriers between functional areas of the business. Teamwork among different organizational units is essential for effective quality and productivity improvement to take place. Number 10. Eliminate targets, slogans, and numerical goals for the workforce. A target such as zero defects is useless without a plan for the achievement of this objective. In fact, these slogans and programs are usually counterproductive. Work to improve the system and provide information on that. Number 11. Eliminate numerical quotas and work standards. These standards have historically been set without regard to quality. Work standards are often symptoms of management's inability to understand the work process and to provide an effective management system focused on improving this process. Number 12. Remove the barriers that discourage employees from doing their jobs. Management must listen to employee suggestions, comments, and complaints. The person who is doing the job knows the most about it and usually has valuable ideas about how to make the process work more effectively. The workforce is an important participant in the business, and not just an opponent in collective bargaining. Number 13. Institute an ongoing program of education for all employees. Education in simple, powerful statistical techniques should be mandatory for all employees. Use of the basic SPC problem-solving tools, particularly the control chart, should become widespread in the business. As these charts become widespread and as employees understand their uses, they will be more likely to look for the causes of poor quality and to identify process improvements. Education is a way of making everyone partners in the quality improvement process. Number 14. Create a structure in top management that will vigorously advocate the first 13 points. This structure must be driven from the very top of the organization. It must also include concurrent education, training activities and expedite application of the training to achieve improved business results. Everyone in the organization must know that continuous improvement is a common goal. As we read Deeming's 14 points we notice a strong emphasis on organizational change. Also, the role of management in guiding this change process is of dominating importance. So, we have discussed in details about Deeming's 14 points for management. Thank you.